Hello and uh, welcome to uh, episode four of the OLI's Conversation with Experts series. And uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, depending on where you're dialing in from. Today, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome uh, to our show, uh, Dr. Ali Eslami Manesh. Uh, Dr. Eslami Manesh received uh, his uh, undergraduate and graduate degrees in chemical engineering in, uh, from the University of Isfahan and Shiraz University, respectively, in Iran. He later learned, earned his PhD in trust engineering at Ecole Nationale Superior uh, Demin du Paris. In 2012, he also spent a two year period as a postdoc with Shell Global Solutions at Clarkson University in New York. And since 2014, he's been with OLI uh, working for us as a thermodynamic. And during his career, he has been involved in multiple projects from academia, industry, and federal agencies. He's widely published and uh, very widely cited in the topics for thermodynamics of phase equilibria, gas hydrates, electrolyte systems, corrosion, and properties of critical materials. Uh, he is a recipient of the Henry Kihian Award from International Association of Chemical Thermodynamics, the Excellence in Reviewing Award from Journal of Fluid Phase Equilibria, and also the Best PhD Student Presentation Award from LCVA. Uh, he's currently focused on developing theoretical models for prediction of general and localized corrosion of corrosion resistant alloys. Uh, so clearly, uh, you know, we're very fortunate to have him uh, talk to us today. So very warm welcome to you, uh, Dr. Ali Eslami Manish. Thank you very much, Vinis, for having me. Excellent. Uh, I'm sure our viewers are in for a treat to learn about the science of electrolytes and how you're using that uh, to uh, really talk about providing some very... Uh, insightful predictions in the corrosion area. Uh, so, so with that, we will move to sort of today's topic. Uh, this topic is a modeling of the corrosion behavior of corrosion resistant alloys and how we can use mechanistic approaches to predict corrosion in, in various chemical process environments. Uh, so with that, uh, my first question for Dr. Eslami Manesh, uh, why is corrosion important in the chemical industry? Can you give us uh, some context here? Sure. Uh, well, the chemical processes environments often um, contain corrosive multi-component systems. They include mixed acids, as well as their mixtures with or without salts. And they're usually accompanied by uh, various types of gases, of course. Uh, these components uh, potentially lead to uh, significant corrosion issues in chemical uh, processing. They bring about um, equipment failure, uh, regular shutdowns and overhauls of the chemical plants. Uh, for instance, um, high corrosion rates can be seen on piping, pumps, boilers, even in reactors, depending on the operational conditions indeed. Uh, by the way, a comprehensive a study by NACE, the National Association of the uh, Corrosion Engineers, in 2016 showed that the direct cost of corrosion in industry is uh, around $276 billion a year, which is roughly equivalent to 3.1% uh, of the US GDP. So it is really considerable. That's uh, good to know that uh, it's a pretty important area to focus on and we are, we are putting our finger on an important problem. Uh, so how about the oil and gas industry? Uh, how does corrosion fit in there? What are some of the main issues uh, from an oil and gas industry perspective? Yes, uh, the course of phenomena in petroleum industry are one of the major issues that um, affect the integrity of production and uh, transportation facilities as well as uh, process facilities. Uh, especially in the recent decades, the main concern has been the production of oil, gas, or even gas condensates from deep wells. So what happens in deep wells is that uh, temperature, pressure, and pH uh, can exceed the resistance thresholds of uh, some of the materials that are typically used in these kind of operations. Uh, when in practice, uh, presence of aggressive species such as chlorides, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, um, of course at high concentrations, uh, can result in substantial general and localized corrosion. In particular, when large amounts of formation uh, or injection waters are, are produced. I should say that uh, localized corrosion is of particular interest because it can be a precursor to a stress corrosion cracking, so-called SCC, which is very common problem in oil and gas industry. So clearly these are pretty harsh environments. 
So what type of materials are typically used uh, you know, to withstand these types of uh, uh, conditions for process equipment? Uh, well, typically corrosion resistant alloys uh, or CRAs uh, are applied in such environments. Uh, their usage uh, of these uh, materials um, has been really sorry uh, due to the need uh, for improving the equipment reliability and safety uh, in operations where uh, we have considerable amounts of uh, corrosive fluids. And, and how resistant would you say these corrosion resistant alloys are to the actual corrosive behavior? Yeah, very good question. Um, although the corrosion resistant alloys are uh, much more resistant to uniform corrosion compared to carbon steel or low alloy steels, uh, in the, the, depending on, on their elemental structures, uh, they can be susceptible to localized corrosion as well as to uh, environmental assisted cracking, uh, especially in harsh, sour hydrogen sulfide environments. Uh, and that um, can be in, in the forms of sulfide stress cracking or SSC and uh, stress corrosion cracking, um, which I pointed out earlier. So uh, I do realize that we do have widely used standards for material selection for these processes. Uh, you know, are, are those published standards and guidelines uh, good enough to select materials or do we really have to understand their behavior in a more granular method through uh, modeling and simulation? Uh, that is true, we have standards, guidelines, but in practice, there are uh, various methods uh, to determine the applicability domains of these corrosion resistant alloys. Firstly, um, as a common practice, we can consult the standards and guidelines, as you mentioned, those guidelines are coming from the professional associations, um, such as NACE, ASME, uh, ASTM, uh, the second way to go is to conduct or uh, utilize the direct laboratory tests, like weight loss measurements or electrochemical measurements. Uh, and the third way, and finally, we can employ empirical correlations. Um, these correlations can be expressed as a function of a specified alloy components or a function of concentration ranges of corrosive um, components. But the point is that uh, all of these solutions uh, can really suffer from a, a common uh, and general methodology, I would say. Uh, for instance, uh, inconsistent test results and uh, interpretations may be obtained from different uh, test laboratories. Uh, so they might lead to inappropriate qualifications of corrosion resistant alloys. Plus, in order to provide reliable uh, qualifying outcomes, uh, laboratory tests need to be performed on their proper definition of corrosion test requirements and wide range of desired operational conditions. Um, as a consequence to what I said, we in fact need to establish predictive models um, that can uh, not only quantify, but also simulate the behavior of the CRAs, particularly in the complex process environments that we encounter. Um, and the development of such models uh, really require in-depth theoretical study of corrosion. Uh, and that uh, can be possible through uh, a mechanistic approach. And, and I understand OLI, we do have our sort of uh, general corrosion model. How would you describe this model for corrosion prediction? Uh, that's right. Uh, our corrosion modeling framework um, consists of uh, a thermophysical and an electrochemical module. How does it work? Uh, the, the thermophysical module describes the phase and chemical equilibrium in AQ system and consequently computes uh, uh, speciation, activities, uh, transport properties of the solution species uh, and those species that are participate in interfacial reactions uh, important for corrosion. Um, these quantities are then plugged into the electrochemical module. Uh, the objective of this part is to simulate the kinetics of electrochemical reactions. Uh, we do it on the basis of the mixed potential theory, very famous in corrosion science. Uh, this routine considers various partial cathodic and anodic reactions uh, that may be occur on the surface of the alloy. And also uh, this module takes into account the transport processes uh, for the uh, species and components that are uh, electrochemically active. One of the key features here um, is that the model uniquely accounts for the active-passive transition 
and uh, the solution in the passive state of the alloy. And this is how we model the corrosion of the CRAs. Excellent. Uh, I understand that when you have uh, acid mixtures along with salts, the environment can be particularly corrosive. Uh, how does the model actually incorporate those effects for CRAs? Yeah, this is one of the major, uh, major application of our model. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there are plenty of data in open literature uh, for bare metals as well as for alloys uh, in various single component chemicals. For example, pure acids or single component chemicals. Uh, these data are being nowadays used for um, material selection. Uh, but however, the chemical process fluids that we encounter in chemical industry, they are rarely single component acids. They're often found to contain various salts. Um, someone might ask, uh, where are the origins of these salts in process? Well, they can be from catalysts, from impurities, uh, from mixing water, or even from the corrosion products. Um, another thing here is that the corrosion rate in many industrial mixtures is literally a complex function of solution as well as alloy composition, makes it very complex. And uh, uh, this fact limits interpolation or extrapolation of data uh, from a small number of um, experimental measurements that are available in literature. I'll give you an example. Uh, fluoride uh, acts and um, uh, aggressive species, uh, very corrosive when we have dilute sulfuric acid. But mm -hmm. when we have preconcentrated sulfuric acid, fluoride acts as um, a corrosion inhibitor. In, it in, it uh, inhibits corrosion. But having said that, a mechanistic model, the thing that we are looking for and we have developed, uh, of course, with appropriate uh, parameterization, uh, it can provide insightful solutions to these challenges and eventually uh, it uh, brings about reliable prediction of corrosion of the CRAs. Excellent. Now, thinking about oil field operations, we know that sulfide stress tracking can be a significant challenge. Uh, does our model predict susceptibility to sulfide stress tracking in oil field operations? Uh, the answer is yes, but to a reasonable extent. I'll, I'll tell you how. Uh, in, in the all ice corrosion model, the repassivation potential, or so-called the protection potential, uh, is calculated by solving the expression for the current density in an occluded uh, corrosion, uh, localized corrosion environment. Then we compare this parameter with the corrosion potential calculated from the general corrosion module that I explained earlier in the interview. Uh, in this way, we are able to evaluate the uh, general corrosion and the maximum localized corrosion propagation rates. Now back to your question, uh, considering the fact that the tendency for sulfide stress cracking uh, correlates with the maximum propagation rate for localized corrosion, the results of this uh, corrosion model can be compared directly with the applicability domain of a particular alloy. Uh, it can be as a function of temperature, pH, chloride concentrations, and partial pressure of the H2S. These parameters are very important in design and control of the operations. But one point I would like to make here is that uh, this prediction method considered only the electrochemical phenomena in the system. Uh, it is nature of the model. It does not uh, treat the effects of stress. Uh, and mechanical properties on the corrosion of the CRAs. So these uh, latter uh, effects uh, need to be taken care of by uh, suitable mechanical models. Excellent. Uh, that was great insights. Now, what materials, tools, and resources do we have for our viewers to learn more about the corrosion of uh, corrosion resistant alloys? Uh, the OLI system corrosion model, uh, as I described, uh, it is incorporated in OLI Corrosion Analyzer version 10 and OLI Studio version 10. Uh, I also encourage the viewers to consult um, our publications in various journals. Uh, they can learn more uh, details on OLI systems corrosion model, its components and applicability uh, consulting those publications. And they can also see a list of um, some relevant uh, papers of uh, uh, hours on the uh, on the landing page. Excellent. Uh, this has been very, very uh, insightful, uh, Dr. Ali Aslami Manish. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And to our viewers, thank you for watching. And, uh, you know, please uh, continue to uh, engage with us and uh, register for the webinar for corrosion of corrosion alloys with Dr. Ali Aslami Manish to learn more about this area. And uh, so long for the next uh, episode. Thank you, everybody.
Thank you.